Hello and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. Have we got some heavy hitting dealers that are going to splash the cash today? Maybe. Yeah. Plead with him. Here's the deal. Please, Hoggy. How much do you want, Egan? 500 pounds. No. No. Can I have 50 quid back? No, you can't. <laughs> when you go to the auction, you never know what's going to happen. On the phone then, you're all out elsewhere. There we are. Uh, sold and away quickly. I'm happy with that. Happy with that? Yeah. Are they going to accept the cash offer? Are they going to gamble and come to the auction with the Duke? Either way, they want the real deal. We are in Carnarvon in North Wales, where people are queuing with their antiques and collectibles to see our dealers. First up to see Karen Delmeny is her namesake. Karen. Ah, oh, two Karen. Yeah. And guess where she found this modernist print? It got donated into the charity shop I work for in Bangor. We looked it up on the internet and realised there was some value to it. Quirky little prints just arrived. Not normally my bag, but I'm open to having a look at it. Stella Karen's hoping the only thing you'll open is a bag of cash. What have you bought me, Karen? Tell me all about this. Um, it's a drawing got donated into the charity shop I work for. Um, we looked it up on the internet and realised it's done by three different artists, one being Miro and the other by Bert, a French artist. We know very little about it except what we've read on the internet. OK, and what charity do you work for? At Age Cumbria in Bangor. And this was donated? It was donated a couple of months ago. What hits you most of all is this block of colour here by Miro, who is a French artist. Quite a contemporary of Picasso, from what I understand. Yes. But there's, there's no indication of that on no, here. No, his signature isn't on it. So you looked up one of these signatures one, down one, here, did you? Yeah, and, and the picture appeared on the internet. Oh, really? Yes. And, and presumably this is a piece from a book We've got the line going down there, so it's been extracted from a book. All oh, right. And about the 1950s? Yeah, yeah. And it's actually a lithograph, right. um, which is a, a form of print. It's a technique in printing lithography. Um, I think it's something to do with oil and, oil and water. But this just stands out like a beacon on it, doesn't it's it? It's lovely, isn't it? So has anyone um, had a look at it for you, for the charity? It just got put back to one side. It's got something. Forgotten. Yeah. yeah, until I dug it out after coming back from the holiday and something at the back of my head said there was something about this. The frame is probably about 50s as well. So it was probably taken out um, of the book. There may only have been a couple of folios within the book and, and they're obviously fetching money in their own right now. So. How on earth do we value this? Have you got any idea what you're expecting for this? A rough guide. Have you? Yeah. I honestly don't know where to go with this, but I will put some money down. <laughs> right. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, 160 pounds, Karen. I think we were looking for a little bit more. Were you? Yeah. I think now would be a good time to ask David, because oh, I'd like to know what the value is saying. Okay, so we'll start with Karen number two. Excuse me for saying that, because always this has got to be Karen number one. <laughs> 100 to 150, 150 to 200 is the various estimations from our experts and from our auctioneer. You have this collaboration, shall we call it. There are two or three artists here and a poet. It's dated 1956. It is a lithograph. It's not an original. If it was an original with the Miro in there, I'd be quite excited, but it's a lithograph. If you got 200 pounds in the sale room, take away 15%, you'd be down to 170. You've got 160 there. So is it worth a gamble to go to auction where it might fall flat? Karen's put an offer down I think she'll buy it at that. Well, Karen, that was a complete guesstimate. I can't believe how close I've got to the valuations. Um, if it's worth 200, there's 40 quid left in it for me. Yes. So I think, okay. I think yes. you've had the best will... offer. Yes, I'll accept the offer. Yep, yes. okay. Thank you.
a good offer. If we'd have taken it to auction, I think we could have lost out a little bit. Fingers crossed my money's safe. That will be down to your dealing skills. Sparks are flying at Michael Hogburn's table as Hilmer's brought him a lighter figurine. It's a quirky little lot and I'm a quirky geezer. Just don't make a quirky offer, Hoggy. You brought in a little figurine, camel, and it's a lighter as well, isn't it? Yes. What do you know about it? Well, it was given to my mother about 30 or 40 years ago in memory of an old lady who I used to sing in a choir with her. Yeah. And uh, it's been in our house since then. So it's gifted to your family, really? Yes. Yeah. It looks like it should be bronze, yes. but it's actually spelter, right. which is a metal which is simulating a bronze look. And there's lots of spelter figures around. It means they're mass produced. Yes, but yes. the subject's really nice. Mm. There's a man who springs to mind whenever you see these sort of petite bronze looking or spelter things, a man called Bergman. And he was Austrian and his bronzes make loads of money. Yes. They're all novelty things like this. You know, even a little man like that, just that single yes. man, a Bergman, would make 200 quid. A Campbell with these figures on would make four, five, six hundred quid, you know? Yeah. It's a shame it's not bronze, yeah. isn't it, you're saying? Yeah. That's it. But yeah. I quite like it. Yeah. Have you ever used it as a lighter? Because this is no. the attachment. No. no. This is all painted. Yes. And we've got a few issues with the paintwork, haven't we? Yes. There's a few knocks, it's, but yes. then you're going to have it, yes. aren't you? Yeah. I reckon this dates to about 1920, 1930. Right. So it's been around the block a bit. Yes. <laughs> and why are you selling it now? Well, it's not on display or anything, and uh, I just thought, well, if somebody wanted to collect them or something like that, yeah. or who are collectors, they might want to have it, so... Very true, very yeah. true. Well, I quite like it. I like the camel, and I like the people on the back of it, and I like the, the idea of this Persian rug coming down here, whatever yeah. rug it is. Yeah. It's really sweet. I'll make you an offer. Thank you. See how we go. What about 20, 30 pounds? I don't think so, no. No. Well, I don't blame you. Yes. I don't want to pay too much for it because it's, it's only spout I'll go 50. No, I, I don't think so, no. Because uh, I saw on the internet last week a very, very similar one to that sold for £180. So I would like to get close to that. Actually. And that was spout was it? Yes. Yes, it was uh, more or less uh, exactly the same as this. Okay, well, so. let's try a little bit more. Let's go 70 yeah. quid. Right. Um, well, no, I don't think so, because, uh, to be honest, I quite like the idea of going to the auction and seeing right. what happens there. I think it's a good idea. Thanks very much. David will look after you. Thank you. And good luck. That's great. Thanks very much. Hilma was determined to go to auction, I think. I thought £70 was ample bid for it. We'll find out soon enough, Hoggy. Let's join auctioneer Simon Bauer and see if the bidders are feeling generous. There was a reserve set at £50, but you said no. I'm not going to accept that. <laughs> you got on the phone to the auctioneer and you said, change it. And you've put a reserve of 150 Now, I know why you've done that, because you saw an example sold for about 180 quid. But that doesn't mean that's going to happen today. No, no, I realise that. Now, are you happy with that £150 that you have set? Yes, because I don't need to sell it. I mean, I don't have to. I understand that. Desirable, commercial, but will it make the new reserve of £150? I'm going to say possibly, but it's a difficult one. Coming up now. 110 is the lovely Austrian table lighter with the striker as well, which is quite unusual. 150 120, 80 pounds I'm bid, 90, at 90 pounds I'm bid 100, 110, 110 bid 120, at 130. It's creepy. You bid on the phone at 130 pounds I'm 130 bid. 130 on the phone. 40, at 140 pounds I'm bid, 150. Ooh, hey. Yeah. What the hell you are? Doing it. That's what Hilma said. See, on the phone then, you're all out in the room and the net at 150. Hammers up at 150 and away, 160. Five. There we are. 160. At 160 bit. 170. 170, 180. 180, 190. 190. Yeah. There we are again, he says. There we are. Here I call. 220. At 220. On the phone then, you're all out elsewhere. 220 and away then. £220 under the gavel and we have to take away some commission. 
180 quid you're going home with. First of all, can I say, Hilma, congratulations. Thank you very much. You did your own research. You said, I think I know better than the experts. I'm going to put a reserve of 150. Never mind their 50. I'm going to put 150 on it. What does it make? 220 pounds, which just goes to show Hilma knew as much and more than we did. And <laughs> so I congratulate you. What are you going to do with 180 quid? Well, I'll put it towards my holiday, I think. Where do you fancy going? Oh, Austria, I think. Austria? Mm -hmm. Can you believe it? She's just sold the Austrian coal painted spelter camera. You know why she's going to Austria, don't you? <laughs> she's going back there to see if she can find some more of those camels. Good idea, Hilma. And you got exactly what you said you'd get. Back in the den, Simon Schneider's clocked something he likes. Uh, we've got a Nike Gold Half Hunter pocket watch and Albert chain. Um, I hope I can buy this. Hopefully I'll get about £700 for it. Better push him all the way then, David. What's the story? It's nine carats gold, it's 1939, I think, and it's a J.W. Benson. Good mate. And hopefully worth a lot of money. <laughs> and how did you come to own this? I bought it about 20 years ago. Right. Just, but it's been sitting in the house. So. But did you actually buy it with the idea of ever wearing it on a waistcoat? I or? did wear it once or twice. Right. It was a fad that I was going through and then stopped. Well, I had the waistcoat in yeah. there. Mind you, I think they look lovely. They're coming yes. back a little bit into yeah, fashion lately. I've noticed yeah. a few people sort of yes. wearing them again. What we've got here is a half hunter. The idea of a half hunter was you wouldn't have to open the yes. watch to be able yeah. to tell the time. A full hunter is when the watch is totally enclosed. In other words, it's like that. Yeah. Both sides. Yeah. Half hunter, you've got with the blue enamel going round, you've got the numerals on the dial and you can just make out the hands yeah. through. So rather than having to open the pocket watch to tell the time, you could get a quick idea of the time just by glancing yeah. at the watch. Yes. So that's why we call them half hunters. Benson is a very good mate, JW Benson. It's quite late for a Benson watch. Mm. Um, and it's what we call a cylinder moment, a wine top yeah. rather than a key wine, which would, oh. would make yeah. it a bit earlier. Yeah, yeah. But you know, you can't really knock it. It's in very good condition. Nine carat gold one, as you say, it's nicely marked. We've got a nine carat gold Albert chain. We've got a little spinning fob on the end of it. Mm. It would have been worn by quite a smart gentleman. And in those days, although wristwatches were already popular then, you did sort of have that generation yes. of people that would want to dress up, wear their three-piece suit and have the, the watch chain hanging from their waistcoat. Now, what I do need to do is I just need to get an idea of the weight yep. of, of the Albert chain. So if you don't mind, I'm just going to weigh it. Oh, yeah, 23 and a half grams here. Mm. So it gives me an idea of yep. what we're talking about in terms of value. So, for your pocket watch and chain, I'm going to offer you 100 pounds, 150 pounds, 200 pounds, 250 pounds, 300 pounds, 350 pounds, 400, 450 pounds, 500 pounds. No. 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 That's a very definite no. Definite no. I'm going to ask you straightforwardly, what are you looking for? Oh, 700. I don't think there's 700 pounds worth of gold there. It's yeah. a good maker, it's working. Mm. I wouldn't want to scrap it, but the people that you sell it to, they will yes. all know what the gold content is there. I don't think it's going to come to 700 pounds, I really don't. Well, five's a definite no. Yeah. Five's a definite no. I think seven's a definite no. I'll have a gamble here and I'll put another hundred pounds down and I'll say six. But that is as far as I'm going to go. You could throw another 50 as a deal. I don't want to. I, I think, no. I think if you would put this in auction, yeah. I honestly don't think you would end up with any more than that. And I think you could end up with a little bit less. Yeah. Okay, fine. It's a deal. Thank you very much for coming in, sir. Thank it's you. A pleasure doing business with okay, you. Okay, thank you. I did once more, but at, at the end, there was no commission to pay and there was cash in hand, so it was a decent deal. I have got a buyer in mind, but I've got to be honest, he's not the most reliable person on earth, so I think I might be hawking this one round for a bit. Simon's had to pay top dollar. Has he got any chance of a profit? 
also coming up. Some unusual snuff boxes are not to be sneezed at. How do you feel about thirty pounds? We don't feel very good, we <laughs> Helen. <laughs> We're gonna have to send the we <laughs> Helen back across the border to get more money. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. Helen Gardner has been joined by Beryl. I brought along two snuff boxes today and I'd like up to £100. Let's hope Helen doesn't turn her nose up. Now what can you tell me about these snuff boxes, Beryl? So they originally came from my grandmother's home and then to my mother and then to myself. So you've inherited them through the family? Yes. This little shoe one is interesting. I've always liked little shoe snuff boxes. Unfortunately, the lid is gone. The, you don't have the lid. No, I never had. Would have the had lid a lid, lid, obviously, to keep the snuff dry. It would have been a very tight-fitting lid. But it is pretty. But lost the lid. What can we do? This one is made of horn, and this is, I would say, about 1860, maybe mid to late Victorian as this is the same date. Now the interesting thing about this one is it's very intricately made. A little bit of horn or ivory on top with a little bit of string inlay. So it's rather nice and it's tight fitting so the snuff could still go in there. Yes. I think these would have been made in England and they would have used just cow horn probably. Yes. Why are you selling them Beryl? Well they're just sitting in a drawer. Uh-huh. So um, it's not, not to keep You're not up. taking any snuff from no. them? So, they're not very valuable, but they're pretty, and I do like them. So I'm going to put some money on the table, and you will tell me when to stop. How about £20 for your snuff boxes? No. No, no, no. How about £25 for your snuff boxes? No. If I take the five away... How do you feel about £30, Beryl? No. Here's David, he's going to give you some advice. How do we feel about that £30? We don't feel very good, we, <laughs> Helen. <laughs> 70 to 100, 80 to 100. Now, the little train one here has lost its lid, so let's put that to one side. But the other box is rather nice. It's horn and bone. I think that's probably worth the 70 to 80 quid on its own. So, I think at £30, we're going to have to send the wee Helen back across the border. And to get more money. To get more money. So I'm going to say worth more than that. So I better put some more on the table. Yes. How about making it £50? No. No? You're very definite, Beryl. Yes. You're very definite. How about £55? No? I'm getting pretty close to where I'm going to stop. £65. I'm going to up my offer to £70. Now that is me completely finished now. You may get more in auction and you may not. But £70 is my very, very last offer on that. Yes, I think I'll take that. Are you going to take the cash? Yes, I am. I think that's the right decision, Beryl. Thank nice you. Nice to see you. Thank, Thank you. you. I thought it was a fair offer, I didn't want to go to auction. I thought that Beryl had the best poker face ever and she made me pay more money than I wanted to pay for those pretty little snuff boxes. Oh, you dealers always say that. Tell me all about it. Now yes, Norman's so got Karen on? paying attention. Norman, welcome to the show. Um, bearing in mind, I'm sitting in a little bit of Welshland here. We yes. have something extremely patriotic here, so you tell me all about it. It's a watercolour of the regimental colours for the Royal Welsh Rusliers, and it is dated in 1903. And we've got a signature here, haven't we? Yeah. Um, which I think is... Sergeant Humphreys. Yeah, and yes. we've actually got the date 1903 there. Yes, you have, yeah. Which correlates with... Um, 1803 there and 1903 in that corner yes. so it's a centenary watercolour commemorating something. 1903 doesn't really give me any information you know it could be something mm. uh, special. I'm, I think it must be for him yeah. to have taken the trouble to do it for a hundred years. What's your connection Norman? 
Well, my grandfather was in the regiments in the Boer War, and also I've been in the regiments. Um, yeah. I'm still serving. I was in the TA for 33 years, and now I'm a caretaker for the Army Barracks in Carnarvon, and I'm also with the Army Cadets. I'm what they call an SMI, Sergeant Major Instructor. Oh, yes! <laughs> <laughs> okay. So how did you come by this? I saved it from a skip. No, really? When they were renovating the barracks in uh, 1983. Now, is it the 23rd Regiment? 23rd Which is Fox. why we've got the Roman numerals XXIII yes. yeah. here for 23. Yes. Am I right in, in thinking that they don't ex actually exist as a regiment anymore? They don't exist as the Royal Welsh Rusliers. They are now uh, the 1st Battalion, the Royal Welsh. Yeah. So we've got the Prince of Wales Feathers. There, yes, yeah. We've got the Union Jack, and yeah. presumably that's the regimental, regimental flag. Co regimental colours, yeah. Yeah. Yes. So Norman, why, why do you think um, now's the time to part with it? Because it's obviously quite an important thing. Well, I no longer have it in, up in the house, um, and it only be in a cupboard somewhere. Yeah. I'm a bit of a hoarder as well, so I've got a, a few other things to to get rid of. Okay. <laughs> I think it's a really interesting watercolour. I have lots of customers, military customers, that, that collect anything military and I think that they would really be interested in this actually. So I'm going to make a good bid for it, I hope. Right, one, two, three, four, five. Um, I'm going to stick £120 on the table, Norman, um, and just hope to goodness that that's a fair price. Yes. Um, Did you have a figure before you came today? Oh, I had a figure in, in my mind, yes, yes. Was it less than what I put on the table? No, a little bit more, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> Was it? Yes. Look, I'm going to stick another 20 quid down, but then um, that's me done. So, £140, I hope that's enough to tempt you, Norman. It is, and I think it's a good offer, yeah. and I accept it. Oh, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you today. Uh, I don't think I'll have any problem selling it on. Uh, there's lots of boys out there that like their military toys. Good deal, yes. Um, I'm glad. Uh, and the wife will be glad as well. <laughs> oh, Edith. Oh. David's bumped I'm into an well. old friend. Now, Edith, you're from Ashton Underline, aren't you? That's correct. And you had a fish and chip shop there? Yes, I did. I might have called in there, you know. <laughs> and while Pat's let the dogs out, it's David who's barking instructions. There are specialist collectors of Staffordshire. They will fight over them. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Carnarvon in North Wales. Simon's been joined by Pat and her canine companions. I'd like at least about 250 for them. I think the price I'd like to pay for them is probably about 100, 120 pound. But I do know I can get a bit carried away sometimes. You'd have to get really carried away to meet Pat's expectations. Now, Pat, you've bought in this pair of dogs. A pair of Staffordshire dogs. Yeah. What can you tell me about your doggies? Well, they were left in my mother's house and I had them and then I took them to my own house. Yeah. And I was actually afraid of one of the grandchildren, you know, pushing them over. So I kept them upstairs in a box. And they've been there ever since? Yeah. With anything that's made of glass or china, condition is yeah. very, very important. And I'm pleased to say that through your hard work of looking after, after them, you have kept them in wonderful, wonderful condition. condition yeah. So what we've got here, we've got a pair of Staffordshire dogs. Now, when I say Staffordshire, it's sort of a generic term yeah. for all the potteries. There was a lot of different factories in Staffordshire around the mid 1800s yeah. that produced these dogs. These are quite nice because they're a little bit unusual. First of all, we've got all what I would call this bacage, which is that sort of sandpapery rough yeah. feel to them yeah. around here. So they're quite plain in colour, but they've got this bacage decoration, which yeah. is quite attractive. Date-wise, I would think about 1860, 1870. The other thing about them, which makes them sort of a bit more sought after by collectors, is that you can see both legs. Yeah, well, these. I noticed that myself. 
because they had another pair, but the legs were. Well, you get together. the ones where you don't see any legs yeah. at all, and the legs are legs, within yeah. the, but I the form. Them with the legs, yeah. Then you also get the one with one leg showing, yeah, one leg showing. and the best one is the one where you've got yeah. two, two freestanding legs. Showing, legs. Yeah. So, from a collector's point of view, the fact that you can see both legs might sound silly, yeah. but they're a bit more unusual, unusual than, yeah. than the other ones. So, Pat. Money. Money, yeah. That's money. The root this of is the bit you always yeah, The root of all evil, yeah. but it's the only thing we can talk about now, yeah. isn't it? Okay. So I hope I can impress you. I'm going to do my very best. There is £100. There is £20. There is £40. £140. That's not enough, really. That's not enough. No. Oh dear. It's not, you're far from it, here. I'm far from yeah. it. Well, you like these, don't you, Yeah, Pat? Oh, they are nice, haven't they been kept well, haven't they? 160? No. Would you like to get David's advice? Yes, please. Well, here he is. Now, Pat, Staffordshire figures at the moment, without question, they're virtually not saleable. They are tens, twenties, thirties. But what we have here is a pair of wonderful exceptions. Quality King Charles Spaniels, look at the separate legs. Our independent values are saying two to 250. There are specialist collectors of Staffordshire and dealers. They will fight over them. They will pay more than that at auction. Right, well that told me, didn't it? Yeah. Well, you know what, Pat? I still think I've made you a good bid for what I can get yeah. for these. And I don't really want to increase my offer anymore. Well, if you put another 20 pound on, I'll take it. And well, that's good offer for you. I'll put another 20 pound down if you want me to. Yeah. You're happy with 180 pounds? Yes. Okay. We've got a deal. Thank you very much indeed. Simon, you might have bitten off more than you can chew. Across the den, Helen sat with Cathy. What have we got here? This is a nice little basic elephant, a nice saleable thing, and we'll do our best to buy it. I'm hoping that Helen will like it as much as I've loved it, and I don't want to go with less than £50 today. Well, there is an elephant in the room. Let's see how it gets on. You've brought your elephant? I have. You like elephants? Yeah. All my jewellery is elephants and... That's your good but, luck charm, is it? Yeah. But I don't have the display unit and grandchildren around, I just don't want it broken. So I'm hoping somebody else will love it as yeah. much as I have. But you've kept the metal ones, the unbreakable ones, have you? Yes. They never leave me. It's your lucky symbol. Have you I been know. to Africa to see I any? Have. Did you? Did you I go went to, to Africa to see them in oh, their natural Oh, was that fabulous? It was wonderful. Wonderful. Fantastic. Well, what can we say about Bezik? It's very collectible. People love it. They did a lot of animals. About 1940s, 1950s, when they were made. Mark Bezik underneath, Bezik England. This one's in fantastic condition. How this has survived with this trunk and tusks, I don't know. No, you must I have don't. kept it in very good condition. In a china cabinet? Yes. It's not there anymore, so it needs a safer home. So, what are you going to do with the money? Um, Buy more elephants? <laughs> <laughs> no, probably spend it on the grandchildren. Spend it on your grandchildren. So what are we going to give you for this basic elephant? Lots. <laughs> Lots of money. I don't think so, but it's a nice thing. £20. But you like elephants. I do. <laughs> <laughs> How about £25 for your elephant? No, I'm not going to no. take £25. How if I make it £30? No, still not. No? 35 pounds. No, it's a very definite make of head. No. 35 pounds is as far as I'm going to go. Did you expect to get more than that for it? I did. I've seen them on on the internet, the auction sites going for between 50 and 100. So oh well, that would be better, wouldn't it? I'd... But 35 pounds is where I see it. But you've got a choice. You can go to auction. If you get 100 pounds, you're going to get way over that. I'm going to leave that choice up to you. 35, I'll take it to auction. Good luck with it. Do really well at auction. Thank you.
Mathis packed her trunk and said goodbye to the dealer's den. But will Nelly cause a stampede in the sale room? I think it's well worth a gamble. A lot of people love elephants. Beswick is very collectible. It's coming up now with a 40 to 60 pounds estimation. The reserve is 50 quid. Let's hope there are some Beswick buyers here. Here we are, the Beswick uh, elephant. Where are we on that one? 60 pounds for the Beswick elephant. 60. 50, we're like in 30 and bit at 30 pounds in the room. 30, 30 in the room, the bit low yet. 35, 35 bit, 35 bit for the elephant, 40. Come on, we need a bit more. 40 pound bit, 40 M bit, fine, 45 bit. In the room at 45 pounds, I'll go 50 now then. 45 bit, 50, 50 It's at 50 now, we're at the reserve. I'll go five again then. You're all done mind, on commission then, you're all out in the room at 50 and away. OK, £50. It's made its money in the room. There is a little bit of commission to take off that. I make that £41. What's your reaction? I'm happy with that. Happy with that? Yeah. OK, so you're going home with £41. Any idea what you're going to spend that money on? Probably the grandchildren. OK. <laughs> As always, they seem to get it every time. The grandchildren. <laughs> Real deal. Take home £41. And all for the grandkids. One ninety bit, 200 220, but 220 in a way then. After the break, DJ Jukes on the decks. But it's Edith who's hitting the high notes. 750-800. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. For our last deal, Edith is with Hoggy and he likes what he sees. Nine carat gold bracelet, chunky little beast, weighs about 100 grams. I'll be buying that. I think Oggy uh, is going to be very fat, and I'm going to do a little bit of Archie Darchy. Ding ding, round one. Edith, it's lovely to see you. Nice to meet and you. And may I say you're looking lovely today? Thank you. How old are you? I'm 90 next I Friday. Think... They told me that and I didn't Next believe Friday. it. Yeah, well done. Thank you. you look so well for that. I don't feel it. No, you don't look it. Today, yes. we're here, we're dealing, and you are selling a nine carat gold bracelet. Yes. Weighs 109 grams, doesn't yes. it? Yes. How long have you had it? Oh, I've had it um, 1957. Ah. I bought it from the hubby. Yeah. It's got the name inscribed on yes, there, hasn't it? James. It's really old-fashioned now. People don't wear these, yeah. do they? they? They were very, very popular. They were the very popular. 60s, 70s, 80s, very, very popular. 90s as well, almost, really. Yeah. I think they're going to make a comeback with all these rappers, you know, like yeah. all the bling guys. I think there's, there's people out there who like them still. Yeah. So let's take a closer look at this rascal, shall we? Yeah, okie dokie. And on the back, we've got the nine carat gold mark. Right. And on the strap work here, this is called bark decoration. Bark. Bark, B-A-R-K. Yeah. Rather than just like um, normal plank. And it's in really good condition. Where do you keep it? Just in one of the top drawers. Yeah, it's madness really, isn't it? When you think of the value of it, because exactly. it's got quite a lot of value to it, I'm sure you exactly. know. But... And regrettably, we buy and sell these on scrap prices now because it's not a dynamic piece of Victorian jewellery or George no, and it's no. just a bulk stand a piece of gold to a lot of people. Exactly. I think there's buyers out there for it though. Good. I'll make sure I give you a good offer. I hope. I will. I hope. I'll look after you. Oh, I love the colour of that. You like that colour? I'm only going to stick to that colour. I love that colour. 50, 200, 50, 300, 50, 400, 50, 500, 50, 600, just tell me when to stop. Oh, carry on, carry on. My 650, God. 700, 750, 800, 850, 900. Are no. you going to make a little profit? No, no it's not a profit, sure. With one more swing it? No. Time for the Duke to step in. Edith, 900 pounds. It's all pink, your favourite colour. Yeah, exactly, but. Not quite, you know. Now, Edith. Oh, of how are you, darling? All right? I'm very well. Now, Edith, you're from Ashton Underline, aren't you? That's correct. I know Ashton Underline. And um, you had a fish and chip shop there? Yes, I did. I might have called in there, you know. <laughs> anyway, so 
you're 90 years young. Correct. Will we ever get to 90? Yeah. Of course you will. Now, yeah. Hoggy, yeah. this is a very special occasion because with Edith, you know, we've, we've got to get as much as we can. That is got to be sold by the value, the weight of the gold. Yeah. It's not so fashionable today. Mind you, Hoggy might. I think there's a few blinksters out there. You yeah. know, the old rap, 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 rap. Yeah, yeah, you may be. Rap, 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 rap. They might yeah. like it. Yeah, okay, so yeah. maybe a few of those rappers may want yeah. that. Yeah. There's £1,100 worth of gold there. Yeah. If that was put into the bullion office today. The valuation from our independence and auctioneer are 950 to 1,000, 1,000 to 1,100. 900 is on the table. Right. How here's, much more can we put down? Here's Hoggy? the deal. Plead with him. Here's the deal. Please, Hoggy. How much do you want, Edith, to I make would you like happy? A thousand, if possible. I will give you a thousand. I there told you. I thousand. told you it wasn't a mean devil. I told you all along. The diamond geese, the hoggy, he always comes good when he needs to. And now, Thank with this dear lady, he's come good. That leaves a small profit. Yeah. Now, he needs to get round to the office. Very quick. Very quickly, because <laughs> gold at the moment is... Whoop, 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 yeah. whoop. So, uh, are you happy with that? I'm very happy. Thank you for now, Hey, Dev, can I have 50 quid back? No, you can't. <laughs> now, deal sounds good. I'm going to get out of the way. Huggy, thank you, David. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Great deal. Thank and you. Thank Dave. you for coming on the show. Thank you, Dave. It's a deal. Pleasure. So a thousand pounds is what you wanted. Thank you. A thousand pounds is what you got. Thank you. It's a deal. Thank you very much. My pleasure, Edith. Thank you. Edith was a charmer, wasn't she? She was great. No, I enjoyed it. Let's see if our dealers were laughing when they got home. Today was a tale of two halves. Two dealers were fortunate. Simon was top of the tree today. Remember his watch and chain? I have got a buyer in mind, but I've got to be honest, he's not the most reliable person on earth. Thank you very much. But he needn't have worried, as he made the biggest profit of all the dealers. Thank you very much. He put the Staffordshire dogs in a local auction, but he ended up taking them home when they didn't sell. Karen came in second when she sold on the military watercolour. Don't think I'll have any problems selling it on. Uh, there's lots of boys out there that like their military toys. And one of them marched right up to her door and bought it. And she sold the modernist lithograph but only got back what she paid for it. However, our other dealers weren't so lucky. Helen paid £70 for the two snuff boxes. No, that is me completely finished now. David didn't rate one of them. The little tree in one here has lost its lid, so let's put that to one side. Oddly enough, that's the one that sold, but she only bagged 28 pounds. The other one is still in her shop. Oh, carry And on. Edith ran Hoggy ragged over her gold bracelet. Plead with him. Here's the deal. Please, Hoggy. How much do you want, Edith? Sadly for Hoggy, he got his fingers burnt as the price of gold went down the next day. That didn't bother Edith. She walked away with a grand in her hand. Well done. Thank you. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. See you.